Hello everyone and welcome to my first attempt at a YouTube video. I am completely new at this, so please be kind. And uh, I am looking for some critique, some positive feedback. If you have anything to let me know about, anything I can improve on, please let me know. And uh, we shall see how this goes. So welcome and let's see what happens. Sometimes you see the storm coming, sometimes you don't. So today I want to talk about change. Change is something that can be either a friend or a foe. Uh, several of us are having lots of changes that are happening, uh, especially in the last six months due to the circumstances that are going on in our country right now and around the world. So just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Joshua Harrison and I live in Northern Virginia, about 25 miles from Washington, DC. I decided this was the perfect opportunity and I wanted to take advantage of a gift that was given to me. Um, many people wouldn't see it like that and that's exactly the problem. I didn't either in the beginning. I have been in the same career for the last 20 years and I actually thought I was set for life. I thought I would be retiring with this job and the universe had something different in mind and for a long time I played victim to what was happening. I felt powerless over what the outcome would be with my job. I was living comfortably and I did have my lifestyle set. This job offered opportunities to me that I never thought was possible when I was a child, especially a teenager. I grew up in a really small town and from a young age I couldn't wait to get out and see the world and I figured the perfect opportunity would come to me by being a flight attendant. So at the age of 22 I was hired on um, as a flight attendant with a major carrier in the US and that was the story of my life for the last 20 years. So much has happened. I've been to so many places, 53 countries if you can believe that and I'm so thankful for the opportunities that I had with that job. One of the best parts was my ability to learn about different cultures, different cuisine, and just to explore and take these memories with me. Photos, memoirs, okay, not memoirs, but I did write down a couple things in my journal about some of my experiences. And these are things that I'm so grateful to have experienced. While I was doing my job, my life was literally like this. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, je pars à Paris, ville de mort et pleine de caca de chiens. Attention à la marche. Oh. Espagna. Todos fijen que no entender mi español caribeño está bien todavía. Te amo. Oh, Deutschland, das ist ein Hund, die Freilutin Lütte. Wir folgen sie einfach die Regeln. But eventually, the enthusiasm faded because it became a routine for me and it became a little bit monotonous, if you can believe it. Once you've been to the same country 20 times, it just becomes a little bit of a routine and you lose that sort of excitement to see this place over and over and over again. I found myself settling into a position that I still liked, I still enjoyed it, but I didn't feel any real eagerness for life. It just got a little bit dull. Be careful what you wish for. Whoa, changes. Then reserve hit me at 20 years of flying. <gasps> no, no, no. 
Hello? Speaking. A trip? Not today. When do I have to be there? Now? Oh, God. Okay. Amsterdam. So back in December, when we started hearing about these things happening in Asia, I knew I was fearful that it was going to mean something. Changes were going to come for me with my career and with my lifestyle. You know, in the beginning, I don't think we really knew exactly what was happening and no one could really predict what's happened around the world. And when this thing started making the news all day long, it's the only thing you could hear about, the only thing people were talking about, it became a little bit overwhelming for me. It was something that started to sort of take over my day. Um, and even into the night, I had such a hard time going to sleep because it was in my head. What am I gonna do? What's gonna happen? What is this gonna look like when this really all unfolds? And then in March, the airline started to take action because passengers were no longer booking flights because of the fear of, of this thing that's been going on. And then by April, they had cut 90% of the flights. So I was stuck at home in a place that I love, but talk about a change of lifestyle. I'm used to being all over the country, all over the world, several times a month. So now I'm at home all the time, which is great. However, my partner is also a flight attendant with the same company, so he's going through exactly the same situation that I am. Uh, it's good, but it's not good. So there's been lots of changes and adjustments. Exactly what to do with my spare time. I was so used to being so constantly busy and traveling that it's such a change to have the entire day, every day, to do whatever you need to do or want to do. However, what do you do? So one of the bad things when you and your partner both work for the same company is you have a total loss of income if something happens to your jobs. And that is exactly what we were looking at. So the fear started to take over a little bit more, um, became a little more concerned. What will we do? Where will we go? Where will we move? Can we afford where we live right now? Can we afford our car payments? These are very stressful things that, you, that, that pass through your mind. And what do you do with that information? You know, what do you do with that worry and that despair? And thankfully we both decided, we both made a very conscious decision that we were not going to become victims of what was happening right now. So step by step, we did things that we knew we had control over um, and they're things that we enjoyed. We decided that we would be walking every day, four miles, five miles, just to get out of the house, clear our minds and give us a chance to get away from the media, get away from social networking and from the telephone. And it was, one thing that we could look forward to every single day that we knew we had control over. That was the first step. The next step was watching how we ate. We decided that we needed to not become, again, a victim of the you know what thing going on right now. <laughs> that there's two options. Either you're going to gain weight or you're going to get in shape. I think that that's basically gonna be the outcome of what's happening by the time it's said and done. Because now people who were so accustomed to be busy all the time, out doing things, felt like they needed to be stuck in the house. And actually, in fact, for a little while, we were required to be in the house. So it's gonna be an interesting outcome to see what happens. The second thing that we both have a passion for is cooking. So it's actually been really good because we've done lots of research. Um, I am actually following a ketogenic diet. I've been doing that for one year now, and I can talk more about that in another video. But what's important about it is we were both able to sort of perfect, not perfect, but really work on our quality of cooking. And it's something that we both have a passion for. So again, that's number two. That's the second thing that we were able to do that we had control over that actually brought us some happiness and it makes you feel good. You know, you know, you're eating healthy. You know, you're doing good things for your health. 
I think that's very important now, especially. You want to make sure that you have the best immune system possible. That you. So the cooking thing became important for us because last year I had an injury to my knee and I was out of work for two months. And during that two month time, I actually managed to put on quite a bit of weight. And trying to get my knee to recover with the excess weight was not an easy thing to do. On top of that, just the extra weight I was carrying around really affected my joints and my back and I just felt lethargic and heavy and, and I just ached. I'd wake up in the morning and my body would hurt. And I'm too young to be feeling like that so I decided I needed to take a step. At my heaviest, I had gotten up to 315 pounds and I was absolutely miserable. So. As of May last year, when I started following ketogenic diets, I was able to drop 80 pounds in one year. And I'm currently losing approximately two to three pounds a month still. So it works, it's great. I can give more information on that in another video. And I am actually really excited about it because it works. So we were able to keep ourselves busy and somewhat satisfied doing our walking and doing our cooking. And we managed through April pretty well. It was a big adjustment, but we managed. And you know, you learn a lot about yourself and your relationship when you're next to each other all the time. And uh, I'm really grateful. We we're able to concentrate on cooking and on walking and we kept our minds occupied and busy. And knew that there's only so much you can do when it comes to what's going to happen in the future. So again, I think it's important, stay present. Do not try to control the future because it's unknown and it creates a lot of stress. So also at the end of April, I had a conversation with my sister. It was just a short conversation, but it would be life changing. Uh, she mentioned that I get into real estate. And to be honest with you, real estate is something I've thought about off and on several times throughout my life, but I never thought I had the time to do the courses, to do the studying, to do the training. And, you know, I think a big part of that was fear of change because I was comfortable. So then I start thinking about real estate and it hits me. I am not working. I have plenty of time to study and to concentrate and take care of my insane cats. Oh, baby. So I realized I had time to do this and immediately, as soon as I hung up with my sister, I started calling real estate agents. I literally just Googled them and found anyone that came up and called them and said, hey, listen, I'm thinking about doing this. You know, what do I need to do? What's your advice? How's the market? All these things that I really had zero clue about. And I think what was amazing is that I was able to have these conversations with these people just out of the blue. I didn't know what I was talking about. I just made it up. I did a little quick Google search for some, some real estate terms and uh, I had some amazing conversations. The positivity I received from them was like really inspiring and, and it, it pushed me, pushed me right into it. I think it was the next day I enrolled in online courses. In Virginia, it's required that you have 60 hours of education and pass the course exam before you can proceed to take the board exams for Virginia and the national portion as well. So literally that next day, I started my online courses. So the funny thing is my family always told me that I was so hard headed when I was growing up that once I decided I wanted something, I was going to get it. And you know what? As an adult, I realized that I can take advantage of that hard headedness and aim it in the right direction. So that's what I did. I became very determined. I studied like a maniac. I studied for six, seven, eight hours a day. But again, I was given the opportunity because I was not working. So sometimes things happen, you have no control over it. But if you really sit down and think about it, you'll realize it's an opportunity waiting for you. It's an opportunity that was given to you. So I woke up in the mornings excited 
I actually wanted to study. So something that caught me by surprise was when I devoted so much of my day towards studying with literally my face in the book and doing a couple of apps on my phone, I realized that I was neglecting my family and, and my partner. Maybe not so much neglecting them, but they were getting less attention and I could feel a shift in the air because of that. Changes. So it, it was like walking a tightrope, you know, it was uh, a little bit of a, a, just a different scenario. You know, my family and my partner had gotten accustomed to me being away on trips. And so in their mind, they knew when I was gone, I was gone. They could always text me or FaceTime me if they wanted to. But it's a little bit different when I'm sitting in the same room and I'm absolutely not present because I'm 100% concentrated on studying. So it was a little bit of a challenge, but I have to say that, you know, I'm surrounded by amazing people and they understood. It took them a little while, but they did start to understand why I was so focused and they started to believe that I was going to be successful doing this. And the combination of that and the motivation I felt, the tingle in my stomach that said, you're going to do this, all these things led me down this path. And I have to tell you, it was 100% unexpected. Again, it was just an opportunity that arose. And after thinking about it, I just dove in. You know, sometimes you really have to just take a chance, put yourself out there and see exactly what's going to happen. So then I studied and I studied and I studied and I studied. And after six weeks, I felt prepared to take the exam for my real estate school. And when I passed that, I felt such an accomplishment because the material can be difficult. It's a lot of vocabulary and things that obviously, if you haven't done any studying towards real estate, these are things you won't know about. So it was, again, a little bit of an adventure for me. I haven't really studied anything where I was graded for over 20 years. So big adjustment. Now I will say that as an adult over the last few years, I have studied French, but the difference was my tutor would not actually give me grades. I would get a oui or a non. And the non, you know, was never a good thing, but it wasn't as much pressure as I felt when I took the real estate exam. So after passing, it was a huge sigh of relief, but then the really scary thing was next. I had to take the board exams for Virginia and then for the national portion. And that was absolutely a stressful situation for me. But what I realized was I was in my head, I was doubting myself and after studying as much as I did, I knew I knew the information, but I put so much emphasis on the test and passing the test the first time. And, you know, throughout this process, you know, you realize a lot of things about yourself and my perfectionism and my hard headedness or my determination. You know, it, it was a lot to deal with. It was it was an interesting ride, I have to say. So it was two weeks later after passing the course exam that I scheduled to take the board exams and of course for those two weeks i studied like a maniac again of course and um you know it was a mental game for me it wasn't the information it wasn't the education it was a mental game because the day of the exam i was so nervous i could barely put my clothes on because i was in my head and you know, fortunately, I've learned some techniques over the years, things I've read. Um, I've read a lot of information about controlling your thoughts, basically, how you react to things. And it's all the reaction of the emotion that you feel that puts you in these bad places. 
So I was playing mental tricks. I was meditating. I was doing affirmations. I had a list of things that I was doing to try to keep myself calm to take this exam because I knew I knew the information. But what was stressful for me was the exam. And it's all I could think about. So fortunately enough, I did no studying the night before. I absolutely refused and I slept okay actually. I think it was helpful. I didn't push myself too much the night before the exam. So I got a good night's sleep. I woke up in the morning, could barely get my clothes on, um, <laughs> got in the car and everything was fine. I drove nice and slow. I found the place right away and I parked. I was 45 minutes early and that's exactly what I needed. I needed to be early. I took that opportunity to really, honestly, I meditated and I thought positive thoughts and I knew I was gonna do it. I just had to get out of my head about it. So I went upstairs, I took the exam. It was two hours and almost 30 minutes and it went by in about five seconds. But I have to say that I was prepared and I was able to pass the Virginia portion and pass the national portion. So huge sigh of relief huge i drove home and instantly i got on the phone i started calling brokerages because i needed to know who i was going to sign with when you pass your exam then you have to get your license but to get your license if you're going to be an active salesperson an active real estate agent you have to have a supervising broker a principal broker where you can as they say hang your license so instantly I got on the phone and started calling. I spoke to four different brokerages and started to schedule interviews for them so I could decide exactly where I wanted to go, where would be a good fit for me. So after I passed and I started speaking to the brokerages, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm a real estate agent. What? It's amazing the process, how everything came together. I, I don't, I can't even explain it, but it's just good stuff. And so I'm focusing on the future. I'm aiming high. I want to be successful at this. I want to try to make a difference in the way that people sell real estate. I am actually waiting for my license to process right now. I have signed with the brokerage and I'm super excited about it. I am reading so many books right now about being an entrepreneur, about communication, just things that are available to you. You know, it's actually amazing how much material is available for you when you're ready to make a change. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of information about what was going on with me. And I want you to know that some opportunities present themselves and there's no way you could have planned it. You can't plan these types of things. But when it's given to you, you have to take advantage of it. So you guys stay tuned and I plan on showing you exactly what the steps are from where I'm at right now until I start selling real estate, all of the processes, and I hope to keep you guys up to date with all of the changes because this video is titled Changes because guess what? They're happening. All right, guys, much love. I'll see you later. Bye.